Hello, before we start, let me tell you that this video is translated to multi-language and you can choose the translation from here. In the previous video, we talked about the accounting cycle and its first step. Today, we'll talk about the second, third and fourth steps. But please, if you are new to my channel, give me a like and subscribe and leave a comment. Let's begin. Step number two, make a journal entry for the transaction. After financial transaction occurs, it's entered into a journal entry. A journal entry affects two accounts. One is debited and the other is credited. This is called a double entry bookkeeping. What are debits and credits? They are left and right. They describe the double-sided nature of the financial transactions. In double entry, if money goes into one account, it has to go out of another. Still bit and clear? Don't worry. In this illustration, we'll see how accounts are affected by debits and credits. Here we can see assets and expenses. Their normal balance is debit. So they increase in debit, decrease in credit. And here we can see equity, liabilities, and revenue. Their normal balance is credit. So they increase with the credit, decrease in debit. For example, if a business receive $1,300 from a customer for service render, both the cash and revenue accounts increase, meaning cash will be debited, revenue will be credited for $1,300. And the journal entry looks like this. And the explanation is receive service payment. Step number three, post entries to the general ledger. Once the journal entry has been created, the next step in accounting cycle is posting. Posting is the transfer of journal entries to the general ledger. The chart of accounts differs from business to business. It depends on how detailed you want your ledger to be. Here's what the previous journal entry would look like posted in the ledger. We can see two accounts, cash and revenue. Cash is debited, revenue is credited for $1,300. Step number four, an adjusted trial balance. To double check whether debits equal credits, we use what is called the unadjusted trial balance. It's a list of all accounts for the ledger with their balances. This process is usually done at the end of accounting period. The purpose of unadjusted trial balance is to check for possible errors, but doesn't guarantee that your finance are completely free of mistakes. For the sake of our example, we'll assume that the end of the accounting period is September 30th. This is how the trial balance would look like. We have here cash in the debit, service revenue in the credit, and balances are equal, debit equal credit. Now, let's move on to the example. Transactions for the month of October are presented below. And the require is prepare journal entries for the transactions, post the journal entries to the ledger, and prepare a trial balance. Let's begin with the transactions. The first one is on October 1. Stockholders invest $100,000 cash in an advertising venture to be known as Pioneer Advertising Agency Inc. Here we can see two accounts, cash and common stock. Cash is asset, common stock is equity. So cash increase, common stock increase. Cash debited, common stock credited. The entry looks like this, debit, cash, credit, common stock. And now we will post this entry to the ledger, we have two accounts, cash and common stock. Let's move to the second transaction. 
October 1, Pioneer Advertising purchases office equipment costing $50,000 by signing a 3-month 12% $50,000 note payable. We have here equipment and note payable. Equipment is asset. Note payable is liability. Equipment increase, note payable increase. So equipment will be debited, note payable will be credited. The posting looks like this to the both accounts, equipment and note payable. October 2, Pioneer Advertising receives $12,000 cash advance from KC, a client for advertising services that are expected to be completed by December 31. Here we have cash, its assets, and unearned service revenue, its liability. Cash is increased, unearned service revenue is increased, so the journal entry debit cash credit unearned service revenue for $12,000. October 3, Pioneer Advertising pays $9,000 office rent in cash for October. Here we have rent expense and cash. Rent expense is increased, cash is decreased. The entry debit rent expense, credit cash. And the posting looks like this. October 4, Pioneer Advertising pays $6,000 for a one-year insurance policy that will expire next year on September 30. Here we have prepaid insurance. It's an asset. And cash, an asset. Prepaid insurance increased. Cash decreased. The entry, debit, prepaid insurance, credit, cash. And the posting looks like this. October 5, Pioneer Advertising purchases for $25,000 on account an estimated three months supply of advertising materials from Aero Supply. Supplies is an asset. Accounts payable is a liability. Supplies increased. Account payable increased. The entry debit supplies, credit accounts payable. And this is a posting. October 9, Pioneer Advertising signs a contract with a local newspaper for advertising interests. Flyers to be distributed started the last Sunday in November. Pioneer will start work on the content of the flyers in November. Payment of $7,000 is due following delivery of the Sunday papers containing the flyers. Business transaction has not occurred, so no entry. October 20, Pioneer Advertising's Board of Directors declares and pays a $5,000 cash dividend to stockholders. Dividends decrease an equity and cash decrease assets. So the entry is debit, dividends, credit, cash. And the posting looks like this. October 26, employees are paid every four weeks. The total payroll is $2,000 per day. The pay period ended on Friday, October 26, with salaries and wages of $40,000 being paid. Here we have salaries and wages expense and cash. Salaries and wages expense increase, debit, cash decrease, credit. October 31, Pioneer Advertising receives $28,000 in cash and bills Copa Company $72,000 for advertising services of $100,000 performed in October. Here we have service revenue, cash and accounts receivable. The entry is debit cash, account receivable, credit service revenue and the posting will be to three accounts. Now, 
We'll go to the trial balance, but before we have to know what are the balances of all accounts we have. For example, if I have a cash account, I have to sum debit side and the credit side, and the residual is the balance. Here we have cash balance is $80,000. We can see it in an adjusted trial balance like this. Here we have cash, $80,000. We have accounts receivables, supplies, prepaid expenses, and so on. After we took all of accounts and their balances, we have to sum debits and the credits. They must be equal. This is all for today. See you next video.